welcome, welcome to my Instagram. I'm going to talk for a few minutes. Then what am I going to do? I'm going to promote what I got to promote. I'm going to answer some questions. Then, if you have a question for me, I will prob- my comments don't always work, so it's easier if you put the questions in the question section. Where the- You'll know the question section because it has a question mark. I see some- sometimes I see comments, but sometimes I don't. I love your videos. I don't write, but it's still so interesting. Jack Burton wants his truck back. You don't get your truck back. Once it's gone, you- you- it's gone. Uh, all right. Thank you, though. Oh, here's a question. I'll answer a question here. Do you have any advice as far as how to properly block an actor? Uh, well, okay, so blocking has to feel natural. And so blocking is when, just for the people who don't know, it's, uh, it's, it's when you, ha- you, you two things. You put the actors where they want to be. Quiet, I'm not on the phone. It's Hollywood. It's just a spam caller. It's where you want to tell the actors where to be. Hey, you on this line, you get up, you cross to the door. On that line, when she says this, you sit down. That's what blocking is. But it's also camera blocking. You have to decide where to put the cameras. So generally, you let the actors figure out, you know, you let them, how do we, you talk it out together. How do you think the scene goes? Because an actor is going to say, I don't want to get up on that line. And you go, okay, it's fine. So you give them a, a, a ballpark and then you play, you let them, you play off them. You let them, you know, contribute. They, they should contribute to it. Unless it's like a, a choreograph, something that needs to be, you know, heavily choreographed. And then after that, you decide where the cameras go. Uh, let's see, some more questions. Oh, we don't have a lot of people here today. My, my lives haven't had a lot of reach lately. But if you're in the Boston area or if you're in the L.A. area, I'm doing an early, an early live today because you never know when people are going to be joining. Uh, come see my show, A Paper Orchestra. Tickets are now on sale. I'll be in Amesbury, Massachusetts, November 12th and 13th. There are still tickets available for that one. Go get them fast. Go to michaeljammon.com slash live. I'll be there November 12th and 13th. My show asks the question, what if the smallest, almost forgotten moments were the ones that shaped us most? Oh, oh yeah. And then uh, each show is about an hour, followed by a Q&A. Then I'm performing two new shows in LA, brand new stories. So if you've, seen my, if you've already seen my show in LA, don't worry. It's gonna be brand new to you. Uh, and that will be December 10th and 11th. Also, for tickets, go to michaeljammon.com slash live. You ever felt like you needed to push back to a bad idea in the room? Uh, oh, well, here's what you need to understand. If I um, – like if you, you mean if someone's a – if I'm, if I'm a showrunner and someone pitches me a bad idea, do I push back? Well, yeah. I mean, I say no. I say, you no, know, I don't want to do that. I mean, then there's no pushback. It's like, I, I decide. But if I'm not the showrunner and someone pitches a bad idea, it's not for me to say whether it's a good idea. It's, it's the job for the showrunner to say. There's so much, and I'm not entirely clear on your question. How do you know if what you're writing is funny if you are sitting in a room reading through the script, if it doesn't get enough laughs, do you or someone else suggest something better? Well, yeah. I mean, a couple of reasons, Stephanie. So, Stefaroni. So I write with a writing partner, and so I'll say a joke. If he doesn't think, if he doesn't laugh, it's not funny. Uh, in a writer's room, if someone pitches a joke and no one laughs, it's not funny. Or if half the people laugh, you know. But sometimes you just put it in the script, and then you wait for the table read where the actors say it out loud. And then if it gets a laugh, you keep it. If it doesn't, you rewrite it. Does that make sense? Thanks for asking. I mean answering. Uh any tips on writing character names? Yeah, just keep a list. Keep a list. Babies, I, sometimes I use baby naming books just to get interesting names from baby baby name. You know, when I when I pass something, sometimes I'll think of something. I have, I keep a list on my phone of names. Uh, let's see. Best way to become a writer's assistant. Assistant. Well, the best way you have to start off. A writer's assistant is not an entry level job. You want to start off as a production assistant. And then you pony up, cozy up to the writer's assistant and ask them, hey, let's say you, you say, hey, let's say you fell ill one day. Let's say someone poisoned you. How do I do your job? That's how you get that. If you can make a comedy writer laugh, it's good. Yeah, I mean, I mean basically, um, <clears throat> yeah, if you can make a comedy writer laugh, it's, that's, that's, that's a high bar. <clears throat> what else is going on? People are just joining. Welcome to my feed. If you're from the Boston area, let me know. Let me know. And, uh, and if you're in the L.A. area, also let me know. Someone said hearts. Does the hearts mean you're from Boston? What do your hearts mean? I don't know. Hearts Are hearts from Boston? Whatever. I'll wait for someone to comment. I'll, and then I'll answer some more questions. Let's see over here. Hi, I'm 15 years old out of Memphis. 
15, huh? When I was your age, I was 16, wise guy. And I'm working on a creative, I'm working on creating a teen drama show. What would be any advice you have on pitching the show for funding? Oh, well, little Joe. Um, uh, well, I'll answer this. Well, LA was up. Uh, well, Bear Customs, if you want to come see my show, a paper orchestra, I'm going to be doing, I have two new shows. Two new shows in LA, December 10th and 11th. For tickets, go to michaeljammon.com slash live. You can also find the uh, in my profile. Uh, it's a great show. It's a, it's a, if you like Spalding Gray or David Sedaris, it's like that. Um, and then afterwards, we have a Q&A, uh, which people get a lot out of it. So if you're an aspiring writer, you'll definitely get a lot out of it. But also, if you're a human being, you'll laugh and you'll, you'll definitely cry. That happens a lot. I did six shows in August, sold them all out. And so we're like, eh, let's do some more. So now we're doing more. So let's get back to this person's question about uh, about um, my 15-year-old friend. I don't know how you're going to find funding for your, you know, it, that's not, no, I don't think a professional's, I don't think any professional is going to want to throw their money into your project unless it's your family, unless they support you. So I don't think any, you know, but that's okay. You shouldn't, you can still shoot it on your own. Just shoot something really low budget you, and use your iPhone. That's okay. You don't need to spend money on it. You know, get your feet wet. Let's answer a couple more questions. Love your videos. Thank you. Uh, anything else? Okay, let's see. <clears throat> Don't need to cover this again, but just to clarify, I meant maybe you felt in your heart the showrunner was making a wrong decision, but I understand your first answer. Yeah, I mean, I, listen, I, I've been on plenty of shows where I thought the showrunner was making a wrong decision. <laughs> they hired me, it's their show. And so what happens is I say, hey, this is how I would do it. And then they listen to me. And then if they disagree, I let it go. That's not my, it's not my job. It's not, my job is to help them make the best version of the show they want to create, not the best version of the show I want to create. That's a surefire recipe to be, not only to be fired, that'll get you fired, but it's also hugely obnoxious. Imagine you get a show on the air and you're the showrunner. And then someone's telling me they don't want to, they, I don't want to do it that way. I'd say, well, okay, fine. Hit the pavement. Hit the bricks, dickhead. That's what I would say. Hit the bricks. You know? That's what I would say. I hired you to help me. That, are your shows only in LA? Oh, tuck, yes. Well, I have two shows in Boston, Amesbury, Massachusetts, uh, November 12th and 13th, and then two shows in LA, December 10th and 11th. But if, I will be touring with it at some point. So you can go. Uh, go to michaeljammon.com slash upcoming and enter your city uh, there. And, and that way I can notify you when I get to your city. Let's answer some more questions. Uh, what is your next creative tip? Your tree light grateful meditation is gold. It was gold. Uh, well, you're, you're on my, um, my watch list, right? I mean, my, you know, Lori Lynn Taylor, writer. <clears throat> it's how weird that your last name is writer. If you're on my watch list, then you know every... I have a bunch of creative tips, so you'll get them. We send it out. My free newsletter. Everybody, if you want to get on that, it's free. Hmm. goes out every Friday. Um, and I have three tips. So one is for usually for writers. One is tips is for directors or actors. And then I try to put one just for creative people. And so, you know, uh, you'll, yeah, you'll get a tip every Friday. When writing a c script that has a scene that is transitioning into another scene, do you write in the names of shots and visual transitions in your scripts when writing? No, that would be the director's job. I would just do, I might, I might say match dissolve to or match cut to. I might do that if it's necessary, but it's usually not necessary. It's just cut to, uh, you know, don't, don't do the director's job. Do your job. Your job is to write, not to, not to direct it. Best creative works can be very low budget. Yeah, tell, that's exactly right. Thanks for answering twice. Buy one, get one. LOL. That was a question about your writing style. Oh, I, I wouldn't, again, yeah, I wouldn't do that. Favorite recent work of yours? For sure. Come see me perform a paper orchestra. I just had tweaked a story this morning. I showed it to my wife. She goes, wow, that was really good. So she's like, I got you sure? She goes, yep, keep it in. Where are you from? I live in LA. Hit the bricks. Yep. Yep. Uh, what else we got here? Any other questions? No. Oh. Mm, let's see. Uh, that's it. Oh, no. How do you come up with ideas that you think are worth following through to a pilot spec? Paul Kennedy, if you want to know my process, I teach that in my writing course. Uh, you can go to michaeljammon.com slash course for that. Uh, if you want to learn, I teach you exactly how I turn a, an idea into a full-fledged episode of television. 
or movie or whatever, or a novel or whatever. There's a process that I use. Um, and what's interesting about the process, um, like it applies to big budget stuff or low budget stuff or uh, art house stuff. So I watched an art house movie. It was a foreign movie called, what was it called? Uh, Force Majeure. Great movie. But it is, a, it is an art house. It's very art house. But it follows the same structure that I use to create, you know, Hit, hit, uh, commercial hits like they, it's the same thing it's just uh so the format is the same the structure is the same it's just the execution is slightly different man i guess i'll fly to la for a day to come see your show oh stefaroni where do you live that's a long f- that's maybe you could drive or spend a weekend in la the worst places to be any book recommendations writing or otherwise uh i don't think so by the way that cover looked like it took a lot of thought i really appreciate it this cover this cover yeah, this was a. We, I had a brainstorm that. See, and see, so there's a typewriter, and that's me coming out of the typewriter. And if you get really close to it, it's hard to see it, but um, it's pixelated so that the words on my face are actually made up of uh, lines from my book. Can you be a working writer if you don't live in LA? Not easy. Not easy. I am Indonesian. Well, all right. No, no need to brag. Uh, what is the best neighborhood to move to for newcomers? <clears throat> well, Wherever you can afford, you know, and L.A. is getting pretty expensive, so it's hard to say. Uh, you know, the closer you are to Hollywood and Burbank, that would be my uh, – or Burbank. And, you know, there's a lot, most of the studios are out there. How does it – I was going to do a post. Actually, I have a, a post coming up. But that's a good question. Uh, what's your name? Daniel. I have an upcoming post probably tomorrow where I'm going to talk about all the places in Los Angeles that I have worked. And it's a map. And you get to see. You'll get to see over the 20, 26 years. How does a project's financing structure impact your writing? Charles, laugh. It doesn't. So here's the thing what you need to know. I don't work in the, in the world of indie films. I, I am a commercial television writer. So a studio opens up their giant checkbook and they give me the tiniest, smallest little piece of it. And, uh, and, then I, and then that's it. So I work for pay. I don't raise my own money. I don't hustle for money. Someone's got someone's to pay me up front, sucker. I'm not putting any of my money into anything. You got to give, it's your money I want to steal. You know, the studios. Arizona. Oh, well, Arizona's not that far, Stefaroni. You could do that. You could do it. You could do it. That's a seven hour drive from, uh, that's a seven hour drive, maybe less from, uh, let's say, let's say Tucson. Or, or even less from Phoenix. Yes, I'm on your watch list. I completed your course a bit ago. My last name was inspired by you. Yes, we all have the same last name. How would you approach a boss, big EP writer at HBO, about reading your stuff or helping you with connections? Well, Anthony, uh, uh, you have to earn the right. I mean, you, I wouldn't do it before you worked there for about a year. After about a year, you, they should be helping you. You know, if you're if you're it's your second day at work, don't even bring it up. You know, after you put in your year, then it's time to say, hey, hey, you know, then it's time. I'm th- I'm taking on Elon Musk's mashup idea of Das Bebe, hijinks. I love it. Yes, and the picture is on a typewriter. You wrote the the imagery brilliant. Yeah, I did. Uh, thank you. Um, that's yeah. That's basically yeah. That was an idea I came up with, and then I had uh, my friend Kevin Frank, who is uh, if you watch the Conan O'Brien show, he does all the bumpers. He's a very creative dude, and so I had this idea, and I bounced it off him, and then it was his idea to um, see. This idea actually came from. There's a famous Annie Leibovitz photo where she's taking a self-portrait of herself, the famous photographer, and it looks a little like this. And I go, well, that's what I'm doing with this, but I'm not making a portrait, I'm typing. So what if I replace the camera with the, the, uh, with my, with a typewriter? And so then Kevin said, yeah, that's a good idea. What if we make the, um, the, the image here out of the words of your book? I go, you can do that, Kevin? He goes, I could do anything. Uh, one of the best writing I've seen is Bojack. Your recent post made me remember how it uses direct writing to use indirect. It's using jokes to have something serious. Yeah, Bojack. Uh, Bohack. Let's see. When you write stories, um, do you write with a particular end game in mind or do you find that the story kind of resolves itself as you're writing or rather do you know how your stories are going to end before you start writing or do you like to figure out as long? Okay, so Connor, here's the thing. Um, here's the thing, Connor, 
In TV, you don't start writing until the story is broken, until the outline is done. Then you start writing and that can take – you won't start writing until everything's figured out in television. And this, this is my collection of personal essays. I do this differently. Then I start writing and I hope to find the story. And I could be on draft 20 sometimes and I still don't know what the story is. And then hopefully I find it. And then once I find it, I go back and I rewrite from the beginning. It's very inefficient. I don't recommend you do it this way. No one in television does it this way. But this is a set, different kind of project. So that's, that's why I did it this way. Let's answer some questions. Hello, I've been dreaming of becoming a screenwriter for many years. Well, stop dreaming. Outline, okay, outline to go with the flow. I explained that. You're king. I just started watching Glenn Martin DDS because of your stories about it. Oh, bunny. Look, I have a special visitor for you. There he is. That's, can you see him? Yeah, there he is. That's Glenn. That's one of the Glenn puppets. There were probably about a dozen or so. And uh, this one walked off on the last day when the show got canceled. He some, somehow he found his way into my, into my knapsack. Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up, Lancey, Steve? Promise I'll drop it after this. But a few days ago, I made an Uber delivery. Oh, to a nice home in Long Beach. The customer had a Jeep with license plates, J-Beans. Hmm. Interesting. Well, it was not me. It, but thank you. It was definitely not me. The check is gonna bounce. Oh no, you get you get those checks from uh, in the studio. You cash those immediately. You don't miss, you don't mess around. Uh, any others questions? That's it. Um, all right. Oops, sorry. I'm just... What do you think of Stephen? Can Can-? well, uh, I you know I haven't watched one of his shows since uh, he's a kid. I was a kid rather. You know, a hit maker. But um, yeah, I don't really have any strong opinions about him. You are so inspirational. Just discovered your IG profile really recently. Well, Monique the Geek. I like that, your name. I like your name. Monique the Book Geek. Monique the Book Geek. We had a... Okay. Where do you start when coming up with a story outline? The climax? No, no. You start out with the with a premise. Start from the beginning. Where, to find produ- where do I find production assistant jobs? Oh, Julie, I did a post about that. You, see, you know that. Go watch my post. Uh, was thinking maybe it was the women you spoke about at Paper Orchestra. Oh, that was Kelly Jellybelly. No, she, who knows where she is? I mean, I, that was years ago. I don't know what's going on with her. Who knows what's going on? Uh, who knows what's going on with her? <clears throat> um, let's see. Any other questions? Um, no, that's it. What is your work schedule? My work schedule is light right now. My partner and I just turned in our second draft of a script we're writing for the Peacock Network. Peacock. That's the dirtiest network on TV. And um, we turned it in. So now the producers might have notes or not. And then we have to wait. Then we wait. Are the people, that's why I have some time right now, because right now it's three o'clock my time. Are the people who write an episode outline different than the writers? Nope, the writers do that, Bunny. Nope, those, that's, a, that's a writing job. When you first started writing, had you ever felt like you had to preserve your first big story idea, like save it for the time when you were in the business? Absolutely not. Sippa, Sippa, that's a, that's a recipe for disaster. If you think you only have one good idea in your head, you'll never be a writer. Never. Your job is to be. Your job is to come up with one good idea after another, week in and week out. You got that's your job. So if you think you only got one, if you're saving it, don't bother. You're not. You're never. You're never going to be a writer. You know, understand what I'm saying? Your job is to keep on doing it, week in and week out. Where do you meet female producers who I can seduce my way into Hollywood? Good question. You didn't see my question? No, I didn't. Did I? The lit script. I don't. Um. No, I didn't. I thought I answered your question. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. Sorry. Uh, I really want to go to your show. I want you to come to my show. Why are we fighting? And that reminds me to budget in the ticket price to come see you in December. Yes, Steve. Thanks for these meets. I'd ask a question, but you do a good job covering things in your other videos. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, I hope to see you at the show. Uh, tickets are on sale. Yeah, for my Boston show. Tickets are on sale for my Boston show. I'll be in Amesbury, Massachusetts, November 12th and 13th. It asks the question, what if the smallest, almost forgotten moments were the ones that shaped us most? And then I will do two shows uh, in, in um, L.A., December 10th and 11th. For tickets, go to michaeljammon.com slash live. I hope to see you all there. Lancey Steve came to my last show, and he's coming back. Two new stories 
Steve. Two, so you don't have to worry. Brand new stories. Which four faces are carved on the screenwriting Mount Rushmore? I don't know. I didn't realize there was a screenwriting Mount Rushmore. I mean, what is your daily work schedule that you make for yourself to write? It just depends on what I'm working on. It just depends what I'm working on, my friend. If there's no, it, every day is different. That's what's so great about being a screenwriter. Or that's the worst part. Tell us a story and how you came up with the title of Paper Orchestra, Tucker the St. Bernard. Well, Tucker the St. Bernard. Okay, so that is actually, uh, if you want to know, you can download that story for free, actually. It, it, I don't know if it's up yet, but it's going to be up soon. You can go to michaeljammon.com slash story. That's what it is. It'll, if it's not there now, it'll be, lo- it'll be uploaded, uploaded sometime later today or tomorrow. Uh, that, that's the title story from my upcoming collection of Paper Orchestra. And, and it explains how I came up in that story. Is, you'll, you'll know, if you read that story, you'll know why I came up with the title of Paper Orchestra. But I could ruin it for you, but I'd rather have you read the story. You talk about being authentic in scripts. Do I, Crossman? Are you calling me out? It manifests differently in Marin as compared to Tacoma. With the two different tones, how do you approach the authenticity? Yeah, I mean that's de- yeah, and you're right. I mean Marin is very authentic and very real, and um, and and Tacoma FD is a much different vibe. It's much, uh, it's like a little sillier. It's it's a, it's almost it's kind of a stoner show to be honest. Um, how do I how do I do that? Well, I don't set the you know the guys the two star, two stars, Kevin and Steve, great dudes, and they're also the showrunners. Uh, they set it. They decide what the tone is. So all I can do is pitch. In terms of authenticity, we do have a consultant on the show who's a firefighter, fire, fire, Cousin Bill. He's Kevin's cousin. He's a retired fire, firefighter, Cousin Bill. And so, you know, we don't just make stuff up about fire departments. Like he'll say, no, that's not how it works. This is what this, you know, it's called the apparatus floor. You know, it's not called the garage. It's the apparatus floor. So he'll constantly, uh, you know, correct us to make it more authentic in terms of firefighter stuff. Do you have to be great English vocabulary to be a great screenwriter? Is this, it's, it's, this might be, is that your second language? Well, not necessarily. You have to be able to speak the way your characters speak. If your character is a 17th century scholar, then yeah, you better have a good vocabulary. But if your character, you know, is an immigrant who, who's just learning the language, then you don't, right? It just depends on your characters. I appreciate that. Good daily writing exercises. I know you mentioned during personal lessons. How long are those usually? Uh, well, mine are mine are around. How long is each one of my personal essays? I don't know, ten thousand words, maybe. Uh, you know, around twenty pages, twenty pages or fifteen to twenty pages. Do you? Ha- uh, okay, did that. How to overcome my fear of flying? Yeah, stay on the ground. By the way, you're the best source I have found on writing. Got that straight, striped tomato. You should get on my watch list. MichaelJammon.com slash watch list. You may want to work on, um, you may want to listen to my, 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 my podcast. Screenwriters need to hear this. The link is in my profile. You may want to check out my YouTube channel. I have longer content there. At Michael Jammon Writer is my handle. They just gave me a handle yesterday. What's your net worth? Oh, why don't you, why don't you, yeah. That's, that's a perfectly valid question. Uh, by the way, you, okay, I did that one. Okay, all kidding aside, I produce and direct videos for sports. Can I transfer my knowledge and experience into getting an agent? How do I get an agent? Mark, uh, go to my YouTube channel. Watch my video that I did. It's about a 45-minute discussion on getting an agent, getting an agent or manager. I posted it on my YouTube channel, at Michael Jammon Writer. Writer is my YouTube channel. Go watch that. Can't wait to see you. All right, Steve, can't wait to see you, man. My hope plan is to become your first groupie. Sweet. So we, that's my plan too. We have the same plan. Once you get through, once you get enough performance dates cross country for a paper orchestra, we need to get, we need to all get a rocking tour bus. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll have a, I'll probably have like a Prius. Do you read material of writers that take your program? No, absolutely not. That exposes me to liability. I don't want to be accused of stealing or, or inadvertently steal someone's material. So no, but I give, I have notes. I have uh, like a notes worksheet. These are the things you need to, to do to get through, uh, to write your own piece, you know. So I walk you through the steps, but I can't, I can't read it for you. That's, that, that would be above and beyond. Have you ever realized you're, you know, I may at some point do some kind of workshop, a live workshop, but I don't know. I, I'm not really sure how much time I have for that. Have you ever realized your f- finished script had a story problem and how did you go about fixing it? 
Any tips where to start as it is also tight and puzzle pieces are in place? Well, yeah. How do I say your name? Ro, Ro Yagman? I don't know how to say your name. But yeah, uh, I do. I teach that in my course. I, I, I show you that in my course, you know, if you really want to learn how to do that. Oh, someone. I just got someone's email. April. April, April wants to see me, my show. Um, do you have enough people for you to go to New York? Uh, probably not. You never, you never have enough people. But I'll be there at some point. You have a YouTube channel? Sweet. I certainly do. At Michael Jammin Writer is my YouTube. Sorry, I meant the emotional authenticity. How do you approach the emotional authenticity in Maraford Tacoma considering the two different tones? Uh, it's the same thing, man. It's really the same thing. Uh, and you know, you have my course. You know that big act two moment where you, where you kind of ha- hammer at home. Uh, you always put that in. Sometimes it may not stay in the script because maybe Kevin and Steve don't want to keep it. But uh, we always put it in. Um, it's really just no difference. It's, uh, you know, all those A stories have some kind of emotional stakes. Sometimes they take it out because they don't want it in. But and that's totally right. That's totally fair. If they want to take it out, that's on them. Uh, my job is to put it in. Their job is to take it out if they don't like it. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Free Sunshine. Does TV writing follow the same beat structure as film writing? <clears throat> uh, often it does. Yes. Very, very similar. The, what, what I teach is very, can be used for both, for sure. Uh, I keep on procrastinating on my movie. How do I not do that? And that's, the, that's, the, that's the question right there, Julia. That guy who's interviewing on the podcast seems to be a lot earlier on his career, but he also seems knowledgeable. How does he compare to average folks in his position? Well, that guy is Phil, Phil Hudson. Um, and so Phil is, um, uh, yeah, I mean, he's, he started as a PA a few years ago and now he's an associate producer. So, uh, he knows a lot, but he's, he wants to learn more, right? Lori, okay. What do you love about LA? Well, I've been here for 30 years. Um, uh, it's a manageable city. It's not as expensive as New York, although it's catching up. Uh, what do I love about it? It's not my first choice to play for some place. Just so you know, it's not my first choice for, of cities to live in. I've been here a long time, so I'm not, I ain't, I'm not the Chamber of Commerce. I'm not the best person to ask. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Anything else? I'd love to see you come to Houston. Oh, Nesky Pie. You know what? There's been a lot of interest for me to come to Houston. And Greg, uh, who's one of my followers here, he's trying to, we're trying to arrange a Houston show. Nesky so what you should do is go to michaeljammon.com slash upcoming, enter your email address and say Houston on it because I need to have a certain number of names before I, book, before I go to any city. I have to have a lot of names, a lot of emails, you understand? And that's the thing. So sometimes people say, oh, come to my city. And then I say, I'd love to. Give me your email address. And they go, no, I ain't giving you my email address. So if someone's not willing to give me your email address – they're not willing to fork out, fork over the bucks to see to buy a ticket. That's how I look at it. So, you know, it's nice that you want to come me. You want me to come, but if I don't get an email out of you, <laughs> I, I just to me it's just like a, it's an empty gesture. Hi, Michael. I don't have a question. I just want to say you're awesome, Tommy. Thank you. I appreciate that. Oops. Can you read my screenplay? No. Do you travel to Tacoma before writing the show Tacoma? Uh, I didn't, but uh, the guys, the showrunners, they've been there. So like flat in the. So, like, to fly to Miami, you need ten thousand folks. Got it? Uh, not, I don't. Not ten thousand, but I, I need a lot. Depends how big the venue is. But Norwich Bull, Norwich Abe, Norwich Abe. Uh, yeah. So, if, same thing. Go to michaeljammon.com slash upcoming and enter it. Shit, I walked away. I, I don't know if you answered. I certainly did. Lit script doctor. I, I certainly did. Okay. <clears throat> Great. Thanks for answering. You're welcome. <clears throat> You're welcome. Uh, I started writing two scripts and couldn't figure out the log line. Time to start over. Yeah, it, that's certainly the way you got to start over. Um, is that it? No, there's not. Ever feel there's too much of everything being done already? Yeah, there's a lot being done for sure. I don't know if I'm gonna. I'm going overboard with the action description of my script. You are both in action lines, but also in parentheticals. You are. To what extent should a writer direct within the script? None. The, here's what you need to know. No one wants to read those action lines. They're going to skip right over them. Your job is not to direct. If you can't convey what's going on, you know, in your dialogue, you got a problem. You got problems. 
If you could live anywhere and do your work, Michael, where'd you choose? I know Stanley Kubrick moved to London as he greatly preferred it to Hollywood and people still came to him to work. I would probably go, uh, I'd probably, maybe New England. I'd probably go back, check out New England for a little bit. Ezra, Ezra, our fearless leader. You got a lot of Ezra's. You like BTS behind the scenes? I just want to say you're my favorite screenwriter. Julia, how many screenwriters do you have? Be honest. I appreciate it, but be honest. How many? But I appreciate it. Um, that's it. That's it. I got to the end of the questions. Currently binging your podcast episodes. Joseph, thank you. We got a lot of good stuff coming, actually. Lots more good, good stuff coming. Whoa. Uh, if you're in L.A. or Boston, come see my show. Leaving to go purchase tickets to Paper Orchestra in L.A. now. Nicholas, I was going to say, go. Go leave. I, I promise I won't say anything smart while you're gone, while you're getting tickets. Yeah, for, uh, yeah see you at the show. It's uh, michaeljammon.com for tickets. And if you're in the uh, – so two shows – in Boston, in Amesbury, Massachusetts, November 12th and 13th. Then two shows in L.A., December 10th and 11th. And if you've seen my previous shows, these are brand new stories. <sighs> brand new. See that? That's magic I'm blowing you. <sighs> go get it. All right, Nicholas, go get your tickets. Do you think Broccoli and Broccolini are legitimate friends or that's just a coworker vibe? Coworkers. Friends with benefits. That's what they are. Friends. That's weird. Why did I get it? Oh, never mind. Amici con benefici. Coi benefici, dire. Who speaks Italian here? Am I the only one? Am I the only one? Sono l'unico, per purtroppo. I need to... Oh, well, I'm... Hold on. I gotta just do something real fast. Sorry. Okay, uh, what do you like to write when you aren't screenwriting? I write I, my personal essays. That's that's what I actually prefer. That I'm part Italian, yeah, but you're not the part that speaks Italian, Julia. Uh, who's next to interview? I just had uh, I just had David Litt on, who's the co-creator of um, King of Queens. Uh, King of Queens, and so, sorry, I was getting a thing. So he's going to be on my next interview. He was great. I'm starting learning Italian. Oh, get on it then. Get on it. Uh, let's see. Okay. That's, is that enough for my questions there? Woo. I'm exhausted from talking. Okay, everyone. Thank you. Go get your tickets. I will see you at the show. If you're in Boston. Whoops. I need to learn what you're saying. Anch'io sono d'accordo. Non ho la minima idea quello che dico. I just said, I don't even know what I'm saying either. Um, ma me la cavo, direi, but I get by. You know what I'm saying? I get by. You should see me in an Italian restaurant and knock, I knocked her socks off. Boom! Okay, go get your tickets. Thank you, everyone. Uh, MichaelJammon.com slash live for tickets. I hope to see you at my show. Go get it. Bye-bye.